Hi, I'm Courtney Nash. I'm an editor with O'Reilly, and I'm joined today by Jay Edwards. Welcome, Jay. Glad to be here. And Jay, we are talking to you today about your talk at the upcoming Velocity Santa Clara Conference in June. Um, why don't you tell me the title of the talk, and then we're going to dive into some of the details. So I'm going to be talking about using Ansible to instrument kind of a, a Postgres installation. And Ansible is, okay, so I'll set back a little bit. If we start talking about how you manage large numbers of machines, there are three or four, well, there's really two popular methods right now. There's Puppet and there's Chef. Right. And that's kind of server management and mission management. Uh, there's a third player kind of recently called Salt uh, that's very nice. Yep. And finally, there's Ansible. So I'm going to be talking about, really, I'm going to be talking about Ansible. And I just happen to use Postgres as something that I, you know, I need something to, to work on to, to demonstrate to people. So I'll be I'm using Postgres for that. So that was going to be part of my question was why, I mean, is there something really specifically juicy about Postgres and Ansible and, and that you wouldn't want to use Chef or Puppet or? So it goes to why I would want to use Ansible. And the reason is, unlike Puppet or Chef, Ansible has no notion of a centralized server. So with Puppet and Chef, while you can run them in standalone modes, most traditionally there is like a central Puppet server or a central Chef server. Right. So in my company's case, Palomino, we do consulting, and we have a large number of clients. Some might have Puppet, in which case we would use Puppet. Some clients have Chef, in which case we use Chef. Some clients have any kind of configuration management or server orchestration framework. So what Ansible lets us do is it lets us get started doing those kinds of tasks that you do with Chef or Puppet, but without the overhead of setting up the centralized server and getting the, our clients to allocate resources to that. And maybe, you know, they don't want to deal with that entire infrastructure and you have to set up in collective and do this and do that. So we'll just use Ansible, which does all its work over SSH. So there's just absolutely nothing to install. You can just get started right away from your laptop. Now, interestingly, for my personal projects, I also use Ansible because I don't, it's not like I keep a server farm up running in the cloud to work on my little side projects or to test things. So instead of, you know, trying to work with Puppet or Chef, I just use Ansible and, you know, it's the same kind of thing. There's, I don't need any kind of persistent state uh, to work with tool stuff. Cool. And I mean, the other thing that struck me about, because I'd never heard of Ansible until I saw your, the title of your talk. So I thought that was interesting. I mean, it also seems in terms of by, by being able to use SSH, SSH, you're not worrying about like, you know, DSL type stuff or any of that kind of thing. It seems like that too is a much easier way to get people up and running, right? Right. It's, there's no, there. Everybody always has SSH access. You don't have to worry about, well, you need to open up port 8609 and you just port 11D12 and we have to go to the firewall guys. And so it's it makes it very simple to kind of bootstrap. Um, another thing is that the configuration is, uh, it's just YAML files. So it's, you just kind of write markup uh, and you like call this little modular or do this action. So Puppet, I mean, so Chef is like full blown Ruby. Puppet has its own language while not as feature rich is still, it can still be kind of a bar for traditional systems administrators, right? They, they're like, I don't want to write code. So you really just kind of write a YAML file that describes the kinds of steps that you want to take. Um, another, I don't want to say advantage, but another advantage is how you extend it. So if you want to write a new function in Puppet, right? So I want my Puppet servers or my Puppet clients to talk to ZooKeeper and, and look at things in ZooKeeper. You have, to, you have to write a lot of Ruby, which is fine if you like to write Ruby. Uh, if you don't like to write Ruby or you don't know how, this can be a problem for you. 
So Ansible is actually extensible in any language. It's really kind of a framework, and it is perfectly happy to run whatever kind of executable you, you give it. And that can be in C, or that can be in shell script, or you know, Perl, if I, people still use that, I assume. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like I said, it's, it's a very low bar to stepping into that realm of, of configuration management and server orchestration. So you're kind of getting at my sort of one of my last questions, I think, which is who would want to come to this talk? You know, if you're really gory deep into configuration management, is there stuff in here that you might be interested? Is this definitely for people who are just getting their toes, you know, wet with configuration management? Who's this talk for? It, it, it is probably for people that do not already have a robust solution in place. If you already have Chef deployed and, and you're happy with it, this is not going to convince you that you need to scrap that and, and start using Ansible. I will say that in the perfect world, when you're using Chef or Puppet, no one ever really has to touch a server, right? Nobody ever has to log onto the server and do things. Uh, and it turns out that's not actually the case, right? Nobody achieves that that perfect goal. Right. So in those cases that you do need to do things on all the servers or some subset of the servers, Ansible is a good tool, additional tool set for that. So if you do have a Puppet set up, but maybe you don't have mCollective set up because it's, it's a, you know, it, it's a little finicky to get running sometimes, um, Ansible might be something that you should look at. Okay. And, and we, you know, you might be starting out when you, if you, is there any question of scale or size when you're thinking about using Ansible versus say Puppet or Chef? No, not really. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'll admit I'm not going to set up Puppet for like, if I have five servers, but I, I would probably use Ansible in that case, which is why I said, like, I use it for my personal stuff. Um, there are definitely modes of use for Chef and Puppet where they work with those smaller environments. I just have never personally done it. Okay. And uh, last and final wrap-up question, what are you looking forward to most at Velocity when you'll be there? That's a good question. Um, I, you know, I like the, the hallway track, you know, I, I, I like meeting people and seeing what's going on and, and understanding kind of the ebb and flow of the industry. Uh, I don't, I normally don't spend all my time in, in, in uh, people's talks. Yeah. Outside in the hall is sometimes where it's at. Yeah. Well, I hope that people will be interested and come and see your talk. I'm really looking forward to seeing you in California in June. Thanks, Jay. All right. Thank you. Bye.